Ghana, Accra, everybody. If you know that tonight, the heavens will open upon you. Miracles will come upon your life tonight in Jesus' name. It's my pleasure to be, my joy to be in Ghana once again. I think I need to let the world know. After Nigeria, Ghana. I came for the first time. Many, many years ago. More than 40 years ago. And a lot did great and wonderful things. And tonight, a repetition in your life. The glory of God will come upon your life. The wonders of God will come upon your life. And all those who are here, you are here with your heart, your mind, your soul, your body. Everything you desire, the Lord is pouring the blessing of God upon your life tonight in Jesus' name. We're coming to this course and to talk about the glorious visitation. Visitation from heaven. Visitation upon you. Your life will never be the same again. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for your glory. We thank you for your power. We thank you for impossibilities becoming possible even tonight in Jesus' name. Visit your people. And I pray that as the word penetrates every heart, your power will penetrate every heart in Jesus' name. Confirm the power of the word in every heart. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. God bless you. You can see now in the blessing of the Lord. Tonight, as we come to talk about God's own visitation upon your life, upon your family, God's own visitation in our country here, Ghana. God, God's some visitation on the nations of the world. I'm looking at Luke chapter 1. And in Luke chapter 1, we're reading from verse 68. It says, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people. Looking at that verse, the heart of the believer, the expectant believer, and the waiting believer, and the believer that will hold on to the might, to the grace, to the power of the Lord. He blesses the God of Israel because, because, because he has visited his own people. And in visiting them, he redeems them. You connect those two words together. Visiting and redeeming. The visitation and the redemption. A glorious visitation, a glorious redemption. And here the heart of the believer, the mind of the believer, blesses the name of the Lord. And when you get to the point in your life, when you get to the point in your connection relationship with the Lord, and you say, he has visited me. The consequence of that, what follows up on that, is that he has redeemed me. It tells us in verse 69, it says, and he has raised up an horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. Notice those, two, those words we are talking about. 
visitation and also it talks about redemption and then salvation everything follows after that visitation when you have a glorious visitation you're going to have a great redemption and you're going to have a gracious salvation it tells us in verse 70 in verse 70 as he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets which have been since the world began it said it's not a private it's not a hidden it's not a secret thing that the lord almighty he has spoken about that from the beginning of the world he said since the world began from time of adam and eve since the world began at the time of the israelites and moses since the world began with david the king and the prophets since the world began until now god has been demonstrating his glorious visitation and the prophets have spoken about it and the readers of the bible they need to know about that and you as you come tonight and you come to the god of all power you come to the god of redemption it says he comes to you with his visitation his redemption his salvation and tonight is your night Amen. look at verse 78 there in verse 78 it says through the tender mercy of our god whereby the day spring from on high has visited us It's not talking about visiting them somewhere we don't know. He has visited us from on high. That visitation is coming to you tonight. I said the visitation that brings redemption and salvation coming upon your life tonight in Jesus' name. In verse 79, he assures us to give light to them that sit in darkness. And in the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the way of peace. That's the foundation we're talking about tonight on the visitation of the Almighty God. My topic tonight is divine spectacular visitation as he said. He has not only said it once, he said it over and over since the world began. And now it's coming to reality, fulfillment, realization in your life. The divine spectacular visitation as he said. And no one is counted out tonight. Everyone will be a partaker. Yeah. Where are you? I will be a partaker. The high and the low, the big and the small, the old and the young. I will be a partaker. Divine, spectacular visitation as he, the almighty, has said. Three things we're looking at in the message. Number one, the glorious redemptive visitation from heaven. Number two, the great restorative visitation for our healing. Number three, the gracious regenerative visitation for the humble.
glorious redemption, great restoration, gracious regeneration. As he comes to visit us, he has not come empty handed. And as you come for the visitation of the Lord, you will not go back empty handed in Jesus' name. Those who are here, are you here? I said those who are here, triple blessing of visitation coming upon your life. Those who are online, any nation, any country where you are, by yourself or your family, triple blessing of visitation coming upon your life tonight in Jesus' name. It's coming from heaven. It's coming for our total healing. And it's coming to the humble. To the people who know I've not got it all. I need more. I go to church, but I want more. I'm a Bible believer, but I want more. I know the Lord a little. I know the Lord much, but I need more. Because there is still more from what that, from where that came from. All the blessings you got before, they came from heaven. And if you remain humble and receptive and submissive, all those blessings, the Lord will add to them tonight in your life. Look at number one. It's a glorious redemptive visitation from heaven. As we are looking at what we are having here today, heaven is not far away. As we touch the Lord by faith, as we call upon the Lord by faith, as we look on the face of Jesus who provides everything for us, He brings the redemptive blessings upon our lives. Look at that again in Luke chapter 1, verse 68. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people. And then in verse 77, it says, To give the knowledge of salvation unto his people, by the remission, the removal, the cleansing, the washing of, and the taking away of their sins. He says, he gives us knowledge. The knowledge of what he has brought. The knowledge of what we can have. The knowledge of his goodness and grace upon all men. And I swear the knowledge, and then you say, I hear that. That is what you will do. That is what you will give. And then with that knowledge, you approach the Lord and say, Your word says, This is what you'll do. Do it for me now. Salvation will come to you. Redemption. Remission. Remission means he washes us, he cleanses us, and he removes the stain of sin from our lives. There are people who feel the stain of sin abides with them forever and ever and ever. They say they believe, they say they are saved, but they don't believe that the stain of sin had been washed away. And everywhere they go, every time they worship, they are always telling the Lord, the stain of sin, the pollution of sin, the dirt of sin, always there. And they are always confessing that because that's how they feel. But you know, when you come to the redemptive blessing of the Lord, it takes away even that stain of sin from your life. Tonight, it will be now. Thank you. 
And then in verse 78, it says, Throw the tender mercy of our God. Some people, they think of harsh mercy. Okay, I'll forgive you, but then you'll walk your head. Harsh mercy. They think of reluctant mercy. I wouldn't have given you this, but okay, okay, have this. But what do I have is tender mercy of our God. As you come tonight, tender mercy. Loving kindness. Gentleness from the Lord. What do you want? I want my sins to be taken away. What do you want? I want redemption. What do you want? I want my sins to be washed away. It will not ask you questions. Why did you do that? Why did you do that? It will not beat you up. He will not criticize you. He will not condemn you. That's the place of the tender mercy of our God. Tonight, you receive tender mercy. What do you receive tonight? What are you asking for tonight? He never rejects anybody. He says, through the tender mercy of our God, whereby the day spring from on high from heaven has visited us. And then in verse 79, it says, to give light to them that sit in darkness. It brings light to the darkened heart. Some hearts are darkened. They cannot think of something in the light in the open. Some minds are darkened. And they are totally ignorant of the goodness and the grace of God. Some souls are in the dark, in the dungeon. Not even the candle light and no light in the dungeon. They're all confused. They don't know where to go. Everywhere they go, everywhere they turn, it's all darkness. The light of Christ has not shone into their heart. After going up and down, and I'm trying their best, after struggling over struggling, now they sit in darkness. They cannot make any effort anymore. God's light will shine into your life. All the darkness will be taken away. And the sorrow, the sadness, the suffering in darkness, everything will vanish away tonight in Jesus' name. Those who sit in darkness, they also sit in the shadow of death. Death is very near. Where the shadow is, the object that casts the shadow is very near. Those who sit in the darkness of the world, they sit in the darkness of sinful habits, They sit in the darkness of the devil, of Satan, of occultism. Those who sit in the darkness of the ideologies of the world. Confusion is there all the time. The people that search in darkness, they, under, they also search under the shadow of death. And they, there's no other redeemer. There's no other way you can escape. Except as the light of the world comes into your life tonight, it has come tonight. And then it will guide our feet into the way of peace. 
Christ is the Prince of Peace. And is the light of the world. Is the originator of salvation. Is the one that gives the very life and light of God to man. And then when you encounter him, as we are going to do tonight, he will guide your feet into the way of peace. What the opposite of peace? Turbulence in the heart, hatred in life, fighting and violence, malice, evil doing terrible things to hurt other people that the opposite of peace do you remember i'm talking to somebody then that day you fought you were violent and then the other fellow gave it to you almost matched you out of life and then you said i'll never fight anymore the following week you went into that again because you didn't have the prince of peace in your life But when the Lord visits you tonight, because I know he will visit you tonight, that nature of the lion, that nature of the serpent, that nature of the wicked, that evil, that hatred, that pugnacious spirit, he'll take out of your life tonight in Jesus' name. Even when the people who are still in that spirit of hatred and fighting, when they come to you, you cannot fight anymore. The devil lives in them, but Christ, the Prince of Peace, the Redeemer, lives in you. No evil in your life anymore in Jesus' name. It's the one that gives all those who see it in darkness and in the shadow of death. It's the one that leads our feet into the way of peace. He will do it for you tonight. Say, He will do it for me tonight. God bless you. You've got it. Let me show you one man before I go to point number two. In Luke chapter 19, Christ Jesus came to town. And there was one man there that wanted to have visit ways. Christ Jesus. He had done a lot in his life. Bad, bad things. Terrible things. He became notorious as a sinner. Everywhere he went, sin was there. Everything he did, it was stained with sin. Every word they spoke, there was sin there somehow. Even the society recognized him as a great sinner and they were about to isolate him. And the only one that could help him, the only one that could turn his life around, is Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, our Savior, our Deliverer. And so, we come to Luke chapter 19, verse 5. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up, and saw him and said unto him, Zacchaeus, make haste for and come down, for I today I must abide. I'm going to visit you in your own house. Yes. He, he, the man did not say, No, Jesus, you can't come to my house. I didn't want to be that close to you or familiar. I just wanted to see you as we were passing. He didn't say that. Make haste and come down. Today is your day. Hurry up. 
Today is when the Savior, when redemption will come to your heart and to your home. Hurry up and come. Many people hurry up for many other things. Looking for money, they hurry up. Looking for a man or a woman, they hurry up. Looking for joy, they hurry up. Looking to go and watch their games, their favorite games, they hurry up. Looking to go overseas, they hurry up. But the greatest thing you can have in life, salvation from the Lord, the greatest thing you can have in life, the removal of your sin, the greatest thing you can have in life, that you'll have the joy and the peace and the salvation of the Lord in your heart. They don't hurry up. They're sluggish. They're slow. They're retarded. They're looking down and they're walking as if they cannot walk. But Jesus said, if you want this greatest sin, I want to visit your home. I want to visit your house. I want to visit your heart. Hurry up. And, and then in verse 6, it says, And he made haste and came down and received him joyfully. That's how you know somebody who wants the redemption of the Lord, the visitation of the Lord, the salvation of the Lord. He didn't say, no, I'm a big man. He didn't say, I'm too high for that. He didn't say, with my money and my riches, I cannot do that. I always see many people on a glorious day like this. And the Lord wants them to hurry up and repent. Hurry up and believe. Hurry up and be saved. Hurry up and leave the evil in your hand and come into goodness, the graciousness of God. How I wish everybody will be like Zacchaeus. And it says, and he made haste and came down and received him joyfully. Look at verse 7. In verse 7, and when they saw it, they all murmured, saying that he was gone to be guest with a man that is a sinner. They know how to criticize, they don't know how to believe. They thought they were better than Zacchaeus. But they were sinners too. Because the Bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And they stayed in the corner of, the, of those who criticize. They won't believe, they will criticize. They won't change, they will criticize. They don't have peace in their heart, but they criticize. They don't have the hope of heaven, but they criticize. And the man they were criticizing in a few minutes, few minutes will be better than them all because salvation will come to his heart. You will not be in the corner criticizing. I will not be in a corner criticizing. I can't hear you. You want to stay in that corner? I said, I will not be, say that. In the corner somewhere, criticizing, you'll be a partaker of the salvation of God. And it says, 
that he was going to be guest to a man that is a sinner. In verse 8, Zacchaeus acted as if he did not hear. I'm going to challenge you tonight that you come to Christ, you come for his salvation, you come for his forgiveness, you come for his redemption. If anybody criticizes you, you act as if you didn't hear. If your mind, your heart, your conscience criticizes you, uh -huh. you two of all people, you want to be saved. Don't you know, don't you know, don't you know, you do as if you did not hear. If somebody who knows you very well, who had caught you right-handed in doing evil, if you say, hey, you two, you want to go to Christ, you will act as if you are not hearing. The only voice you hear tonight is the voice of your Redeemer that came from heaven and he's going to forgive you, he's going to cleanse you, he's going to wash you, he's going to turn your life around for the better tonight in Jesus' name. Look at verse 8 there. It says, uh, sorry, verse, verse, uh, okay. And Zacchaeus stood and said unto the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor. And if I have taken anything from any man by false accusation, I restore him fourfold. Look at that. The man has met Jesus. He wasn't kneeling down. He wasn't shaking the body. He wasn't shouting. Just meeting Jesus. A change had come. The stinginess of his life washed away. The terrible habit of cheating other people so that he can be getting more and more and more and render other people poor. All that immediately he met Jesus. Transformation has taken place. I hear, I hear some people. I went to the crusade. I sat down there. I had the word of God. I raised up my hand. I believed in the Lord. And then after the following day, their old life is still the life they live. Old drunkenness. Old adultery. Old fornication. Old evil. Old deception and lying. Old nature is what they still have. And they say, the Lord visited me. And I raised up my hand. I gave my life to the Lord. And they talk and talk and talk, but there's no change in their lives. In the case of Zacchaeus, he came down. He made haste. He received the Lord joyfully. And a change came upon him. I'm not stingy anymore. Half of my goods I now give unto the poor. I cheated them before, but I'm going to bless them now. I oppressed them before, but now I'm going to be a blessing to their lives. And then he said, if I have taken anything... From any man, by false accusation, I restore him fourfold. That's evidence of redemption. A new life that comes upon somebody that has a visitation glorious from the Lord. 
I can't keep on wearing that shirt I stole. I'm returning it to the owner. I can't spend that money I stole. I'm going to return to the owner. I'm not going to allow that person I told lie against to be imprisoned. I'm going to correct my wrong and they will set him free. I'm going to agree and I'm going to accept publicly I told a lie against him. He said, if I've taken the reputation of another man, the money of another man, the property of another man, the wife of another man, anything belonging to any other man, if I take anything from anyone, wrongfully by false accusation here i am i am ready to restore that's what the visitation from heaven does in our lives look at verse 9 Verse 9 says, And Jesus said unto him, not to all those people that are criticizing, all those people that are just there only for eyesight or whatever. He said unto him in particular, Today is salvation come to this house. For as much as he also is the son of Abraham, having the faith of Abraham. Not only for Zacchaeus, look at verse 10. For the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. Number one, redemptive visitation from heaven. And it's for you tonight. I said it has come to you tonight. Redemption. The cleansing away of sin. The washing away of sin. The new life that comes to a person who has visitation of Christ from heaven. It is yours tonight in Jesus' name. Now number two. Number two is the great restorative visitation for our healing. There's healing, there's healing tonight. I said there's healing tonight. I want to hear your amen. The great restorative visitation form for our healing. In Genesis chapter 21. I'm reading there from verse 1. And the Lord visited Anna as he had said. Isn't that enough? The Lord visited Sarah, Sarah, as he has said. He said, I will come. He said, I will visit you. He said, I will turn your family around. He said, barrenness will be taken away. He said, you have your own new child. He said, whatever hindered your health or your strength, I will visit you, I will take it away. He said, that blindness, as you come, I'll visit you as we are going back home, that blindness will vanish away. He said, your boy, deaf and dumb, I'm going to visit him. And I'm going to remove the dumbness and the deafness away. It will be done tonight. Yes. Look at that verse. And the Lord did unto Sarah as he had spoken. That's what the Lord does. He gives us a promise. He said, I'll come. And he comes. I'll visit. And he visits. I'll heal. And he heals. I'll deliver. And he delivers. 
I will answer your prayer. And he answers your prayer. Where are you? If you really, really believe that God is higher, greater, better than you are. You told somebody, I'll visit you. You need food, I'll bring food. You need some money, I'll bring money. And if you say that to somebody, and you say, tomorrow, be waiting for me, I will come. Will you be there? I said, will you be there? Now, God is greater than us. Higher than us. And he said, by this time next year, I'll visit you and give you the request of your heart. And of course, a faithful God visited uh, Sarah. And the Lord did unto Sarah as he had spoken. Look at verse 2 there. In verse 2, for Sarah conceived and bare Abraham his son in his old age at the set time which God, at the set time which God had spoken to him. He never fails. Tonight, he will not fail you. I said tonight, he will not fail you. Now, now, why did God visit Sarah as he had spoken? We're looking at Hebrews chapter 11, verse 11. Hebrews 11, verse 11. Through faith also, Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed. Through faith also, Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed. What was Sarah thinking? As Sarah was thinking, God is faithful. He said he will come, he will come. If I don't believe he will do what he said he will do, I make him a liar. Uh, uh, we don't even do that to daddy or mommy. Daddy said, all right, uh, give me the list of those books you said uh, you have to buy and get back to school. Give me the list. Hold on there. I'm going to buy those books and then I'll come back and give the books to you. You don't say, no, daddy, I don't believe. You're a liar. <laughs> Mommy said, uh, I, I know you are hungry. And in a few minutes, uh, you know, dinner will be ready. Just say, uh, you know, go and play. A few minutes, time I'll call you and then dinner will be served. <laughs> you don't say, no, mommy, I don't believe. You're a liar. If we believe daddy and believe mommy and believe friend and believe neighbors, how can we not believe God? He's faithful. He said, I'll come and visit you. And Sarah believed. He didn't make God a liar. Uh, one, one way as we're preaching we'll say look at the word of God he'll say I'll come and heal you you won't make God a liar and say do I believe that he says I will deliver you we don't make God a liar we know he will do what he has said he will do and that's why tonight I believe the prayer you pray tonight, God will answer that prayer. Yeah. The healing you are asking for tonight, God will give you that healing. Yeah. Because through faith, Sarah also herself received strength to conceive. 
and was delivered of a child when she was past age because she judged him faithful who had promised. Your healing has come tonight. My healing has come tonight. Because Jesus went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him and Jesus the same yesterday, today, and forever. Healed. Where is he? Where is she there? Delivered. It will be done. Because the Lord had promised and he will visit us with healing that he has all the time. We're looking at number three here. And it's the great regenerative visitation to the humble. I'm talking of the humble in, in a sense, in this sense. You know, there's somebody who has been trying to do something, trying to get something, trying to manufacture something, fabricate something, and he's not able to make it. And you say, uh, can I help you? He says, no, I can help myself. That the proud person. He knows he's not able to do it for himself. And then someone who can do it, experience it, do it, say, can I help? He said, no, 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 no. I can do it myself. The fellow is dying. I have something that can help you and you'll be healed. Can I give? No, 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 I'm all right. The fellow is sinking in sin, in evil. I, I can pull you up. I can help you. Your life will be new. Can I help you? No, I can help myself. That's the pride of the fallen nature. We cannot save ourselves. The Savior comes. He says, I'll save you. Just, just throw your life into my hand. Depend on me. Trust me. I will help you and save you. Humility will say, thank you, Lord. I've been waiting for a helping hand. Here am I. Help me. That's humility. Pride will say, no, I help myself. I save myself. Humility will say, yes, heal me. I need your healing power. Pride will say, I am not sick. Your healing virtue, take it another place. I'm strong. I'm not weak. And they keep on suffering. The Lord demands that we be humble. To repent, we have to accept. Yes, I am a sinner. I'm humble enough to accept. I repent. I turn around. I hold on to your offer. Save me. The proud people will say. I will try until I succeed. But no human being and no offering of offspring of Adam ever succeeded overcoming sin by themselves in their own strength. Only the strength of Christ, only the blood of Jesus can wash away all our sins and no stain will remain. We're humble, we come to the Lord and we surrender our lives to the Lord and we're forgiven and we're saved. Oh. 
Everything you need tonight is available. I said everything you need tonight is available. Help from heaven available. Salvation from heaven available. Healing of your body available. All the blessings of redemption available. And as you humble yourself and come before the Lord, heaven will open to you and it will load you with heavenly blessings tonight in Jesus' name. In Second Chronicles chapter 7, I'm reading from verse 14. Second Chronicles chapter 7 verse 14. If my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves. And somebody says, God humble me, humble me, humble me. No, that will be too late. That's like Pharaoh saying, this is me. My heart is hard. I am tough. And I'll prove to you I'm not an easy fellow you can handle. Humble me. That's going too far to be humbled in the Red Sea and to drown. You don't want that. Do it yourself. Humble me, humble me. That's like uh, Nebuchadnezzar saying, What I said I will do, I will do. I don't accept that. I don't accept that. Okay, if you want to force me uh, to be humble, humble me. That's going too far. That man became an animal eating grass before you said, Now I accept God. You say, Great God, don't wait that long. Do it yourself. Humble yourself and come before the Lord and say, Lord, I need you. I want you. I desire you. All the promises you have given, I come to receive the promise. If my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves. And pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven. I will forgive their sin. Our forgiveness waits for our humility. Our forgiveness waits for our confession. When you come before the Lord, I am a sinner. I cannot save myself. But I thank you because you sent Jesus Christ to die for me. And I believe he is my substitute. He has taken away all my guilt. He has taken away and broken the power of sin from my life. He only can do it and he only can save me. That the humility is waiting for. It says, I will hear from heaven, I will forgive their sin, and I will heal their land. When you believe that what you could not deal with in your health situation, that you know God can do it, and you come, and you say, Lord, I've not done anything to merit any good thing, as you have done for others, as you have promised, as you have sent Christ to be my healer. Here I come, heal me. That's the humility is waiting for with prayer. It will heal you tonight in Jesus' name. If we come, like you said, we shall come. 
if we humble ourselves like you said we shall humble ourselves if we pray like you said we shall pray if we turn from our wicked ways and confess and forsake our sins like he has demanded of us If we come not with the pride of religion, not with the pride of a self made man, not with the pride I'm doing the best I can, if we come and we humble ourselves, if we turn from our wicked ways, if we trust and believe only in the, in the Lord sent from heaven to give us divine hell. If we accept who we are, sinners by nature, sinners by birth, sinners by practice, seen us in every form and in every way if we come as we are and we come to him as he is we come to him as savior we come to him as lord we come to him as the one that has tender mercy to forgive and to heal and to deliver and to set us free come as you are come to him as he is great things will happen in your life tonight in my life in my life Great things will happen tonight. Can't you say that aloud? The Lord will do it. Miracles tonight. Miracle of salvation. Miracle of healing. Miracle of deliverance. The Lord will do it tonight in Jesus' name. I'm sure you are ready. Am I talking about you? I said, I'm sure you are ready. I am ready. Where am I? I am ready. The Lord will do it tonight. He will forgive your sin. He will change your life. He will give you a new transformed life. Real salvation. You will not be the same as you were before in Jesus' name. And the Lord will heal your body. He'll take your sickness away. He'll perform unexpected miracles in your life. Ready? I'm ready. I am ready. Heads bowed and eyes closed. The Lord wants to forgive the sin of the people that will ask him tonight. Not only forgive, it will change, transform, renew your life. That the power to go and live a new life will grant to you tonight. If you're expecting that salvation now from the Savior from heaven, raise up your hand and we're going to pray. You want that salvation? You want that forgiveness? You want that redemption of the Lord? You want that change in your life? The transformation you couldn't do for yourself? If you want that now, He can, He's able. You raise up that hand. Praise the Lord, it's coming your way. If you are raising up your hand, you stand up wherever you are. Humble yourself. Ask for this salvation from the Lord. He is the only one who can save. 
nothing you do can save you and get you to heaven. All the things you do by yourself. And you try to bring salvation in. You offended God. He has to forgive you. He's the only one that can forgive you. And cleanse your life. And change your life. And make you totally to belong to him. With the power of a new life. You are raising up your hand for that salvation. Please stand up and have that salvation now. Anywhere you are, online, radio, television, anywhere, Facebook, just raise up that hand and stand up and say, Lord, here am I. I want your salvation. We are praying now at the end when you hear that final image. Just believe because God cannot fail. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your power. Thank you because it is not your will that anybody should perish in sin. You promised salvation. You provided salvation through Christ. And these ones indicating their desire for salvation. They turn away from their sins. And they believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Who has taken our sins away. We are asking Lord forgive them now. In Jesus name. Grant them your free and full salvation from sin in Jesus' name. Grant everyone the grace to begin to live as new creatures in Christ. We believe, Lord. We accept, Lord. We rely totally upon you and not our feeling. And we know it is done. In Jesus' name we pray. Praise the Lord that the prayer for salvation and God always answers. Keep on standing and our counselors will come there to attend to you. I will call on the overseer to help us during this time. Then, after we finish this session, I'll come back. Your healing has been guaranteed by the Lord himself. The greatest blessing of salvation has been released. Make sure that you write your name. As the counselors are coming to you, give proper particulars. You do yourself good if you give the right information to them. By the grace of God, we are here to help you, to assist you, to be able to find your feet in Christ. Be sincere with what you are doing. Let's move around and make sure that we take the particulars of all the people who have decided to give their lives to the Lord. Wherever you are, be sure that if you have decided, receive the card, write your name, and also the name you are used to be called or called in the house so that we be able to assist you. Yes, sir. I did not want to run off. Oh, my dear, sir.
If there is anything common or popular around that area, you can mention it so that you can be located. Zacchaeus had his own. Zacchaeus. By the grace of God, he held on to it. Now he's in a better place. As you have got your own, hold it fast. And the best way you can hold it fast is for people who have gone through that salvation, passed through that way, to help you to be able to stand fast for the Lord. And that is what we are doing to help you, to assist you, to support you. Years will come and years will go. You will still be standing for the Lord in your salvation. And when you finish your life on earth, you go to a better eternity. Put down your particulars and make sure that you are sincere with all what you are doing. By the grace of God, tomorrow by 2 p.m. That's what we call lunch hour with Jesus. We want to see you here, all those who have decided tonight. And we'll be in the pavilions around that time. We will take time to help you. Take time to assist you. I remember in my own case when I gave my life to Christ, the preacher who preached to me traveled from Kumasi town to Kwadaso Agri College. And he was teaching us and helping us. At that time, I didn't know the full benefit of what he was doing. But by the grace of God, since we followed and obeyed, here we stand for more than 40 years. We are still standing for the Lord. And that's what we want to do to assist you. Write your name and all the particulars. And our brothers and sisters who are assisting, if you finish, please let us know. Now, you, we want you to take note of these numbers so that you can call for assistance. Internationally, we have a number you can write down plus two, three, four, nine, one, five, four, 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 three, fours, nine, two, six, three. Plus two three four nine one five four 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 nine two six three. So globally, wherever you are, you can write that number to get to our international headquarters. And those of us at the Alpha location, this is the number for GCK Secretariat in Accra here at Enya, 055-245-1955. 
245-1955. If you want any assistance, you can call those numbers and you'll be helped. So you make us to know the ushers, the follow up brethren. Let's know if you are true with the particulars you are taking. Don't go away. Very soon, our convener will come to pray for heaven's blessings of healing and deliverance and all the blessings you are looking for, the Lord will release them upon you. So those who are in the business, let us know if you are true. Don't forget the lunch hour with Jesus tomorrow, 2 p.m. You will come here, sit under the pavilions. People will come to you to help you to be able to understand the decision you have taken today. Within this period of the crusade, we are here for you. And uh, we want to give you the best so that you have a, the best of life. And when you leave this world, you get to heaven the best place. Very soon, the message, I mean, the prayer for healing is coming. By the grace of God, as I've already told you, God has been using our convener in so many ways to bring down great and mighty miracles of healing, deliverance, blessings of all sorts to people who come to GCK programs and other programs. Now whatever problem you brought here tonight Remove your faith from that problem Place your faith in Christ And as the servant of the Lord is going to pray God is going to answer the anointing of God is upon his life. And it is the anointing that breaks the yoke. Your yoke of sin has already been broken. Your yoke of sickness, whether he likes it or not, is going to be broken tonight. Now, our Father and the Lord is coming. Let's stand up and meet him. <coughs> Praise the Lord. I said, Praise the Lord. Miracle has arrived. Christ is there. And Christ has not changed. What he did before, he will do in your life. If your eyes are blind, get ready, they will see. Those years are dead. If you are dumb, the Lord will touch you. You'll get your miracle. You are lame on a wheelchair, lying on the ground, helpless. The power of the Lord will come to you there and raise you up. Amen. 
You need healing, deliverance, miracle, just raise up one hand and lay the other hand on yourself and Christ is there by your side. After the final amen, your checkup, behold, lo and behold, you see the miracle there. I can't say that she remain with them so that at the miracles are taking place, you see, you bring them out. Let's pray now. Father, we bless your name. We glorify you because of who you are. Anywhere, anytime, in any generation, when people call upon your name, you always answer. And we're asking tonight to visit everyone with your miracle healing power in Jesus' name. You said, Whosoever comes, you will in no wise cast out. And whatever we need, whatever we desire, as we pray and believe, you said, We will receive. And I pray that that healing virtue, that healing power will come to everyone in need right now. Heal your people, deliver your people in Jesus' name. Whatever is wrong in the body from the top of the head to the tip of the toe, manifest your power. Take every evil sin away from everyone in Jesus' name. The spirit of insanity and madness, I command you, come out in Jesus' name. Any other problem in the head, in the brain, oh Lord, touch your people now. Bring healing and deliverance to everyone. The water head, I pray, will come down to normal in Jesus' name. But eyesight, whether you see dimly or you cannot see at all, I pray that the power of the Lord will touch those eyes now. Be healed and see well in Jesus' name. Deafness and darkness, I command you, come out in Jesus' name. Swelling in the body, any part of the body, be removed, be healed in Jesus' name. I pray, Lord, is your blood and the pile, everything touch them now. Instantaneous miracle for everyone in Jesus' name. Ulcer, cancer, be healed in Jesus' name. Tuberculosis, HIV, be healed in Jesus' name. Any pain in any part of the body, the hand of the Lord touches you now. Be healed in Jesus' name. Arthritis, be healed in Jesus' name. Those who are lame, paralyzed in any way, you cannot rise, you cannot walk. The power of God comes upon your life now. You are healed in Jesus' name. Every man of sickness, every kind of disease, the hand of the Lord is upon you. Be healed in Jesus' name. Confirmation in every life. Performance of miracle in any life. Lord, manifest yourself now. To the left, to the right, to the back, in the center, anywhere. Let there be healing for everyone in Jesus' name.
online, any nation, any country, anywhere. Manifestation of healing and deliverance in Jesus' name. We well, thank you because we know it is done. It is done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. It is done. Check up yourself now. You'll see the miracle, the healing, the deliverance right there. Amen, it is done. Amen. The healing streams are flowing. The power of God has been released. 